the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived, she was conceived by the by Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, Pour forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we begin this time in the presence of Jesus, realizing that we are of infinite value by Jesus himself, that we are cherished by him, that we are known before we were conceived in our mother's womb. And so Jesus called us here today to bless us and to reveal his love to us and to reveal his love to us through the powerful ministry of Sister Breach McKenna. And so we now prepare to listen to the word of God in the spirit, speaking to whatever part of the world that you're in right now, viewing this presentation. And so we hand you over now to Sister Breach. Brothers and sisters, I'm so happy today to be here with you to, to conduct, I would say, or lead you in this healing service. We're here at the Divine Mercy Conference on this weekend. And this is a very important part because, you know, yesterday, I spoke to you about faith, a divine faith and human faith. Today we're going to exercise that divine faith. We're going to turn to Jesus to ask for his healing power. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, I pray today that you would give your anointing upon myself as I share with my brothers and sisters and for all who are joining this healing service, this Eucharistic healing service. Lord, with the words I share, be to magnify you and to build up their faith, Jesus, that they will allow your power to flow through them, just as in the gospel. Mary, intercede for all of us today as we come into the presence of Jesus to ask for his healing and his grace. We ask all the saints to intercede for us. Amen. And brothers and sisters, just like before I pray with you for healing, to reflect with you on some of the scripture passages that, that will help us um, to, to prepare and to expect and to know what is Jesus? What is Jesus asking us to do today? Well, let's look first at some of the scriptures and the teachings that he gave to us through the gospels and the stories of healing. We have in Mark's gospel, in Mark 2, 5 to 11, the story of the paralytic. And if you remember that beautiful story, I just paraphrase it, where the friends of Jesus, the, the friends of the paralytic, I mean, when he had heard and they had heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and they heard of his miracles and healing, naturally their desire was to bring their friend. But the paralytic could walk. He couldn't get there unless somebody brought him. So these friends took him there, <clears throat> excuse me, and the reason they brought him was because he was crippled. And when they got him there, can you imagine the place was packed, they couldn't get in, but they made the effort. They were determined to get him in front of Jesus. And as he ca they came, they got up on the roof and they took off the roof, they opened it and they put him down in front of Jesus. And as Jesus looked at him, what were they expecting? 
They had brought him there to be healed. They could see that his legs were paralyzed. But what a surprise. <clears throat> Excuse me, because Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And can you imagine their thinking? That's not why we brought him. We brought him to be physically healed. But you know, brothers and sisters, in this beautiful teaching, what Jesus was teaching us and today he's telling us, you know, the greatest healing is the forgiveness of sins. And that's what the divine mercy, that's what uh, 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 the mercy of Jesus is all about. That's why this weekend and when you can get confession, you know, whenever. I know it's not easy now with COVID, you know, and with, with the shutdown and the lockdown, but confession is the greatest healing because Jesus looked at the man and said, your sins are forgiven. We don't see the in the soul of people. We, we know by their actions sometimes that they're not living in the grace of God. But only the Lord can peer into that soul, which is for eternity. He can see when it's sick, when it has, when it has uh, you know, done wrong, when, when it needs forgiveness. And Jesus said to them, your sins are forgiven. He has said that many times in confession all over the world, down through the ages, and people's sins have been forgiven and they've been healed and transformed. It's a wonderful sacrament, spiritual healing. That's what that is. The man below through the roof, Jesus gave him first spiritual healing. And then he said to him, but to show that I can heal, he told him to get up and walk. Now, that's what, what happens. And I always think of Father Kevin. I tell the story that one time we were in, in a parish, given a parish mission, and lots of people came. Lots of people came because Sister Breach was going to be there and I was in the Ministry of Healing. And um, the first night of the mission was confession. And a, a family came there with, with a sick child. And they, they came there because they wanted Sister Breach to pray. But the church was packed and I wasn't praying individually or praying. There was no healing service that night. But there was several priests, about 15 or 16 priests here in confession. And we spoke about uh, the, you know, the forgiveness of sin and the healing and what can happen and how Jesus you know, wants us so much to come to him so that so that we can be redirected, as I said to you yesterday, about our, our GPS being put back to the right direction towards heaven. Well, that's what confession is. It's resetting our, 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 our focus. It's, it's getting rid of the, the, the sin so that we can follow Jesus, take Jesus' route, not, not another route, you know, and to get rid of what went wrong. And I was talking to the people and telling them this. And that night, you know, there were about, we'd say about 800 people. There was a big church. And when confession was over and everything, about two days later, you know, we were continuing with the mission, when a, a lady phoned Father Kevin and she said, Father Kevin, something wonderful happened to my husband. She said, and, and it... it it wasn't Sister Breach who prayed with him. She was really surprised. And we, we thought, and I said to, to Father Kevin, she doesn't realize Sister Breach is only like the straw. Jesus in the sacraments, he's the real thing. But what happened was that her husband and herself brought their little child to get Sister Breach to pray for healing. But it wasn't happening that night, but they went to confession. And the husband who had a paralyzed leg he had polio when he was young younger and but it never hindered him but uh, he came to confession and never thinking about you know his infirmity of the leg with a caliber on went to confession and the following morning he experienced a tingling in his leg and all of a sudden he looked down and he noticed muscle developing. And you know, brothers and sisters, the wife got all excited and she said, we waited, Father, because I wanted you to tell you my husband's at work, but he told me, make sure and go see Father after the morning talk the, 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 a couple of days later and tell him 
my husband is completely healed. His leg is back to normal. And that happened in confession. It's like that man went to confession and Jesus looked at both. He healed his paralyzed leg, but he also forgave him his sins. And that's what we must pray for today. And that's what I'll be praying with you for, for the Lord to heal you. And always remember that about healing. When you go to a healing service or when you're at something like we're at now, remember, brothers and sisters, not everybody, not everybody gets healed physically the way they want. But I can guarantee you when you come seeking spiritual healing, when you want your life to be touched by Jesus, he will give you the grace that you need. And he wants us to come to him with our, our weakness, our sinfulness, our, our struggles and our habits. So that's the first healing, spiritual healing. We'll pray for that today when I'm praying with you. And the next beautiful story in the scriptures is about the centurion. You know, the centurion went to, to, to Jesus. His servant was sick. And, he, you know, they're begging for Jesus. This is from Matthew 8, chapter 5. And, five. and Jesus is, is, is on the journey, on a journey. And, and this, this, this man comes to him. This is paraphrasing the, the, the account in the scriptures. And he, he wants him to heal his servant. And the people are begging for him. And Jesus said, I will come myself. And then the centurion said, oh, no, no, you don't have to come. Just say your word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled because this man believed that there's no distance with Jesus. That he, you know, imagine we sometimes think, you know, people think Sister Breach has to be right there and lay hands on you or, you know, um, when we do intercessory prayer, and when you pray for your children and you, you're begging the Lord, they might be in another part of the world. And sometimes we don't realize that, you know, there's no distance with Jesus. You know, I was on the phone on the FaceTime today, earlier in the day, <coughs> excuse me, here in America praying. I was in nine countries. I was in, I was as far away with, with a family in Mumbai in India. I was in Italy, I was in South America and all over the US, I was in Dublin and I was praying with people and I hear wonderful reports back from all over because I tell the people that like the centurion, Jesus only has to say his word, but what he, he admired the centurion, he said, because of your faith, it will be done go home. And at that moment, the servant was healed. They discovered when, when this man came before Jesus with that faith. And so that's what we must pray. I'll be praying with you for all your loved ones, for your family members. And you ask Jesus to go into that home wherever they are. Remember that healing at a distance. And that's why I use the phone, you know, during the COVID now in these last months since March, I'm sure I've prayed with thousands of people and faced uh, people it's on my website. And I marvel at how the Lord, I mean, I have been praying on the phone since I got the healing ministry like 50, 45 years ago. But this FaceTime, you know, I said, well, it's amazing what the Lord can give you when I, I don't, I'm not able to get on a plane or if I could, I'd be over there and in all these places where I get invitations to go and pray for healing. But I do it right here from my chapel. And, and I see the people and I talk to them, or I talk to them on the phone. So it's the same today. I'll be praying with you, whether it's on the internet or however you're going to pray this. And Jesus is alive. He knows. I remember one day, long, long time ago, Jackie and myself were sitting in the office many years ago and the phone, the prayer line rang and um, so then, you know, it stopped. And then again, the phone rang and Jackie picked it up and this lady was all excited because she said, you know, uh, uh, I called Sister Breach's prayer line for somebody else. She said, and, and as I was praying, she said, I had a wonderful healing of my hand that was a, a crippled, and paralyzed. She said, I didn't even ask for it. I'm looking at my hand as Sister Breach is praying over the phone. And uh, it's again, 
You know, we have to believe, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is God. He's every place. And Jesus loves us to expect. He's, you know, in the scriptures it talks about he was, he was saddened at the lack of faith of the people. You know, I think today, not only here in Ireland and in America, all over, people have to pray for this gift of faith. This is the, the, the greatest gift, a living faith in Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. There is no other way to salvation but through the door of Jesus. Because Jesus didn't say, yeah, you can go through this one, you can go through Buddha, Muhammad, all these. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It is Jesus who heals. It is Jesus who is listening to your prayers and mine when we send them to him. So remember that. And we pray for that. I'll pray with you in the, in, in the moments when I finish this sharing. And then you have the, the, the blind man who came to Jesus. And he said to Jesus, he wanted to see. It's in Mark 8, 22 to 25. And he was really desperate, you know, so he came. And what did Jesus do? He took him outside, we're told. And, and you know, he touched his eyes with, with spittle and some dirt. He put it on his eyes. And, um, and he, he said to the man, can you see? This is Jesus now. And the man looks around and he says, oh, yeah, but Everything looks like walking trees. And Jesus touched his eyes a second time, and then he could see. And you know, brothers and sisters, this is what you call progressive healing. This is where Jesus would say to you, I don't get impatient. Don't think because it's not going to happen now. There's not going to happen. And I tell the story. I tell through Mentum, you know, I, I have said many, many times to people with children who are sick or if you, it's the same with a spiritual sickness or, or some emotional sickness or things, not to give up and think, oh, well, sister, nothing happened. I listen to this and I tell them, don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Keep going. God will not disappoint you. It may not happen right now because we live in the age of instant. If it doesn't happen, it's not going to happen. But there is such a thing as progressive healing. And progressive healing can happen in many ways because it can happen through, you know, um, medication. Um, it can happen through, you know, how many people make novenas or, 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 or go to Lourdes or, you know, they don't realize that... You know, when you start praying, God begins to work. Not always do we see the complete healing. Sometimes it's in heaven that the full healing will come. But healing happens. And I, I say it when I, when I talk about progressive healing. You know, God doesn't change. We change. And I I think of, some of you have heard me say before, I remember a, a family coming to me with their child, you know, who um who couldn't speak and they they kept saying but sister we he doesn't talk and they were bringing him to a speech therapist and they were and I said to them don't you've only started going I mean the child is only like four be patient pray every day ask Jesus to use the speech therapist don't give up do everything you can it's the same when you have children maybe who are suffering from autism or from some other physical or mental sickness. Don't say nothing can happen. People say, oh, well, there's nothing can happen. This is the way they are. No, progressive healing. That little boy started to speak. And I've seen the same with children who, you know, with behavioral problems. Don't give up and think, oh, there's nothing can be done. Sure, God uses therapy and he uses all these means he gives us. But he wants us all to, to continue to pray for a miracle, to continue to pray for healing. I do it myself because, you know, at my age, many of us, we get pains, we get aches and you take medication. The medication doesn't work the very first day, but we ask God to use it to work. It's the same with chemotherapy. It's the same with all of these means. It's the same, you know, when when you have um, a, a business problem or maybe there's something that you, you know, 
you have in your character, you know, bad temper, or somebody's bothering you at work, and there are all kinds of things, then we start praying and we think, oh, nothing happened. But Jesus is saying, be patient. He's working on you and on the intention. God wants us to believe. Don't forget that it's possible. Everything is possible for Jesus. And I, I, I also think of another story, you know, and, and I've told this sometimes, you know, how um, they, that I prayed with this man who was on the doctor. Uh, the, this doctor came to me and he heard me speaking in a church and he was kind of skeptical because, you know, it's hard all the time for to believe in people like me. Where I say, you know, Jesus heals. I'm not denying the medical profession. I tell them, you wouldn't have that power if it wasn't Jesus who's given it to you. You wouldn't be able to research science and everything to find these cures. But if you seek Jesus, he helps. That's all part of his healing ministry. But I remember anyway, praying with um, this doctor and uh, he said to me that his friend, you know, had cancer and had his kidney remo removed and the other kidney was cancerous and would I, would I pray? Well, I was leaving to go on a trip. So I said, I'll pray over the phone. I'll pray with them. And um, I never, I did. The man, the man called me and he said to me, does it work by phone? I said, well, Jesus is every place. I said, I don't know how he's going to be healed. I've never told anybody they're going to be healed, but I sure have told them. Jesus answers prayer, the power of prayer. Well, anyway, to make a very long story short, that man, had an extraordinary healing. It didn't happen right away, but he did get healed. And you know the biggest miracle of all, that when they when they went in to test him and everything, he had two kidneys. One being surgically removed. That's what Jesus can do. That's what I tell people. In these 45 years of this ministry that I'm in, I have seen the miraculous happen through prayer. It's nothing to do with Sister Breach because I'm just a straw and so are you. But it's faith in Jesus. It's believing that Jesus will answer us and give us the best. It may not be what I think I need because not everybody gets the physical healing, but we do get strength. And I know this, brothers and sisters, because the time that I had this awful virus where I got meningitis and, you know, I have this, this sickness for almost a year. Well, it never really goes away, mellitus. But, you know, I used to sit in the chapel and you can get very discouraged. But I used to sit before Jesus. And all I did was I kept saying to Jesus, Jesus, if this is your will, I give it to you. But I would love to be here. Please give me energy. It's people when all these viruses and infections and things people have and we get very impatient. Well, you know, it took me a good while to get to get back to myself, you know, in the sense of the, the pain and my nerve endings and everything. But I prayed every day and I, I didn't feel like praying. I, I felt frustrated sometimes, but I went in before the tabernacle. I went before Jesus and I'd say to you in your homes, if you have a picture of Jesus of mercy, the divine mercy, sit in front of it and ask Jesus, just talk to Jesus and ask Jesus, uh, you know, Lord, give me patience, give me the strength I need and Jesus will help you. Now, that's the miracle of, you know, progressive healing as well. You know that it doesn't happen instantly, but it will happen. You pray and I pray with you today for your families and for your friends. And, and it's like those lepers. We were told only one came back. Maybe it was so long they forgot. You know, this is it. Sometimes we, 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 we forget that we prayed and Jesus answers it. Maybe it's sometime later. So pray. And, and the last thing I would say to you about healing, you know, Jesus often were puzzled by, by somebody who gets healed and maybe they're not the best person and they have miracles. You hear of these stories and you read them and you see, I, I meet people, you know, who um, have these wonderful miracles. And I think to myself, you know, they, did, they weren't, at that big of a believer, but I believed. And I remember saying that one day to this, this person who came to me and said, you know, sister, I, I'm i coming to you because my wife asked me to come, but I don't really believe. I don't think I have any faith. And I looked right at him and I said, John, I believe in Jesus. Even if it's a feeling, you don't have it. 
will you pray with me and say this after me? And I said to him, John just said, Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. Jesus, I believe, help my unbelief. And John said it. And he came back to me and he said, Sister Bridge, I don't know what power was in that prayer, but he said, I'll tell you something. I woke up. And I've had a deep moral problem that nobody knew about. But he said, I went to confession. And he said, and I'm healed of, of something that I carried with me. And I denied Jesus. And I kept saying I didn't believe because I didn't believe it was possible to get healed. He said, I'm healed. Now, I, I wrote down some notes here before I pray with you that I just want to, to answer also. You know, many people say they don't feel worthy. Somebody said that to me today. Nobody's worthy, but Jesus invites us. We'll never be worthy to go into the presence of God, but he has given us that privilege because he loves us so much. And they say, no, they say they don't have enough faith. Exercise the little faith you have. Just say, Jesus, I believe, like John, help my unbelief. Jesus knows it's not a feeling. Make the decision. It's like going to Mass. Don't be telling Jesus you love him and don't even bother going to Mass. You have great faith. If you're a Catholic and you don't go to meet Jesus in the Eucharist or in the sacrifice of the Mass, then do you have faith? Because that's why Jesus instituted the sacraments. They're living encounters with Jesus and he wants us to come. You may not be able to come during the COVID, you know, but I beg you, don't lose your faith in the encounter with Jesus through the, the sacraments. Another thing people say, they say, I'm not holy or it's not important enough to bother God. Of course, anything that affects you today when I'm praying with you, if it affects your life, of course it's important to Jesus. You ask him. Don't be afraid. And the other thing, say, you know, sister, you know, I I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to just tell Jesus what you need. Now, I'm going to pray with you. And I want you to just imagine Jesus there in front of you. And it's not a long, doesn't have to be a long prayer. I want you just to look, imagine Jesus, or if you're in your home and you have a picture of Jesus, the monstrance will be on the screen. This is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. It's in every Catholic church. And this monstrance, as, as you look at it on the screen, and as you hear me praying, you beg Jesus to come forth from wherever he is. He'll be in that room with you spiritually. He lives in you. But also as you look at the, at the host, remember he's in every Catholic church. And the closest church, wherever you are, say, Jesus, I adore you in this church. Whether it's your parish church or your convent, your rec, whatever it is. But no. So let's pray now together. Just for a moment, just picture Jesus there with you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters today. Lord, we come into your presence and I pray, Jesus, that as you look at us, please heal my brothers and sisters spiritually. Lord, as you gaze into their soul at this moment, show them what you want them to bring to you so you can forgive them, Lord. Heal them of any sinful habits, of anything that is offensive to you, any uh, decisions, Lord, any way that we have turned away from you, Jesus, we beg for healing. We ask you to forgive us, Lord. We pray that you heal our memories, that you take away from us, Lord, anger and hurt and anxiety and fear. Jesus, lay your healing hand upon our eyes this day. Touch my eyes and open them spiritually, Lord. Let me see with spiritual vision. Jesus, touch my ears and heal them, that I may hear you, Lord, as you say, come to me, heal me, Lord. And I pray that you give me vision, Lord, also for those who are suffering from physical infirmities in their sight, Lord, or for, for hearing problems, Jesus, heal them. And Lord, I come to you today and I ask you to place your healing hand upon my brothers and sisters at this moment. Touch their lips, Lord. Heal them of uncharitableness, of anger, 
of unclean words, of judgmental words. Lord, of any words that are offensive to you, Jesus, I pray that you heal us today, that you liberate us from any any uncharitable habits or or anything, Lord. Give us the gift to witness to you. Jesus, you want to use our mouth, our lips, our vocal cords to glorify yourself, to speak through us. I give you them today. I ask you to heal me and purify my speech. I pray today, Lord, with my brothers and sisters here, and I ask you, Lord, that you would heal my heart. Heal my heart, Lord Jesus of hardness of heart. Lord, in your divine mercy, we see the rays flowing from your heart. We know that in the monstrance, Lord, in this host, your heart is breathing alive with love and healing power. Eucharistic Jesus, penetrate my heart today and heal it. Take away from me, Lord, fears. Take away unchartedness or hardness of heart. Lord, give me a pure heart. Give me a heart like your own, full of love and compassion. Oh, Jesus, let the burning love of your divine heart burn in my heart today and heal those who have heart problems, Jesus. So many people who, who have high blood pressure or, or things connected to their heart that need physical healing. Jesus, please heal them today. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would touch my whole body. Lord, as you look at, at my sexuality, as you look, Lord Jesus, at, at all the ways that I, I need healing, Lord. Give me, give me a purity of mind, of body. Lord, take away from me anything. Lord, as you look in my, in my whole physical being, heal me, Lord, and heal my brothers and sisters of any sickness. Lord, you know how many people are afflicted today, Lord, with cancer, with all kinds of of sicknesses of the body. Please, Jesus, at this moment, as they gaze at you in this monstrance, I plead with you for healing of whatever this sickness is that is afflicting the person watching and joining in in this healing service today. And Lord Jesus, I ask you right now that you would reach out, Lord. Please, Lord, lay your healing hand as you did for the centurion upon my family. Lord, I am carrying people in my heart who need healing, spiritual healing, members of my own family, people here gathered with me, people that I love that need healing. Jesus, please heal them spiritually and physically of their sickness. I pray, Lord, for for my, my memories, Lord, and for the some memories and some anxiety for those Jesus suffering today with panic attacks, anxiety, worry and fear. In a time when there's so much, Lord, anxiety, Jesus, whom can we come to? We come to you and we remember what you said, Jesus, do not be afraid. Fear is useless. We ask you, Jesus, as we gaze at you in your sacred presence here, we ask you to take away the fear, take away our insecurities. Lord, give to my family and to all of us the confidence that as you said to the apostles, if I take care of lilies of the field and birds of the air, how much more will I care for you? Lord, how true financially and in all the businesses and all that's affected, Lord, through through this coronavirus and through this that all that's going on in our societies around the world in our businesses in our homes with the insecurity the anxiety about the future Jesus we give them to you today I pray that you will give us Lord the grace we need that you will provide Lord you who said nothing is impossible trust in me help us to trust in you and I pray today Lord Jesus especially for marriages, for all those in the, in the sacrament of matrimony. Lord, that you renew marriages. It is a beautiful sacrament. Lord, bless husbands and wives. I pray for young people, Lord. I pray for young people that they will never, ever forget, Jesus, that happiness is not living without you, but that everything you give us, Lord, in life is to bring us peace and joy. Lord, bless these families, the parents and children. I pray especially 
Lord, today for every member of my family, wherever they are, that you, Lord, will heal them. I pray for those who have gone through the suffering of divorce, separation, those who have lost their loved ones through death, those, Lord, who who are at, at odds with each other, who don't see their families, Lord, who have been hurt by members of their own families. Jesus, I beg you, as we pray for healing, to, to heal these relationships, to give them the grace to be united. I pray, Lord, especially at this time, for children. Lord, please, Jesus, I pray for Ireland and all these countries where so many little babies are being murdered in the womb, where, Lord Jesus, the greatest offence, when we think of your own mother carrying you in her womb, Lord, you, the God of the earth, you, Jesus, have chosen to come into the womb of Mary and every mother carrying a baby. What a sacred gift. Please forgive us, Lord. Be merciful to those, Lord, who have in any way participated or in any way supported this awful, awful sin, Lord, this evil in our world today. I pray, Lord, for all those, all of us, that we, not just some, but that you would give us the courage, Lord, to, to recognize the dignity of human life from the moment of conception to the moment of death. Jesus, we all want to be pro-life, pro-life in every way. But Lord, I pray, I pray for the protection. I pray you, Lord, through St. Teresa of Calcutta, who said to me personally, Lord, because of my privilege of knowing her, that no nation that legislates to kill its own children will ever receive those blessings they need. Lord, we want you, please, at this Divine Mercy Weekend, we plead, and I plead for the pro-life movement across the world, Lord, because it is, we have to, Lord, be willing to stand for the truth. The truth will set us free and our nations free. I pray for this intention. I pray for all families to protect them, Lord, and for young people. I pray for purity and chastity, Lord, and for those who are, Lord, involved in sex trafficking and all the other horrors of the world, Lord, be merciful, please, through our prayers of this healing service today, heal them. And Jesus, today, I pray for all the religious, all the brothers and sisters, consecrated virgins, those who have taken vows, Jesus, as we participate in this healing service, I pray for these men and women, wherever they are, Lord, that they renew their love for you, Jesus, that they allow you, Jesus, to be, Lord, active powerfully through them. Jesus, when we give our lives to you, we give our lives to you that you may through us Make yourself known and loved. I pray, especially today for our church. I pray, Lord, for our Pope and Cardinals and Bishops. Jesus, give these men, give them and our deacons, Lord. Give them a deep personal encounter with you, Jesus. Like Paul on the road to Damascus. Like the apostles. These are our apostles of today. But Jesus, you must be the center of their lives. Lord, may they never compromise the truth. May they remember, Lord Jesus, that you laid hands on that you anointed them to make yourself present in word and sacrament. I pray, Lord, that they will never allow the world to evangelize them, that they will live, Jesus, the gospel and spread the gospel, the gospel of truth. Give, Lord, please, to our bishops and priests and to our Holy Father, Give them the wisdom and the courage, Lord, that, that they will never be afraid of the enemy. Satan will try everything to undermine our teachings, our church. I pray, Lord, for those who have, we know we live in a time when there is, I mean, so many hard things happened inside the church and outside. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for those who have in any way abused or in any of our lives, Lord Jesus, we are all sinners. We plead forgiveness. We beg you, Jesus. We ask you to give us healing, Lord. We pray that you would, like St. Patrick, send, Lord, apostles and missionaries to evangelize us, to give us the spirit of Jesus, Lord, that we will never be afraid to live the gospel as our ancestors did. I pray also for all of our leaders, for all public leaders, Lord, for our prime ministers and presidents, 
Oh, Jesus, I plead with you that these men and women will not seek power for the sake of power, but because Jesus said you would have no power unless it was given from on high. Lord, we know that they will be judged before the throne of God. Bless them, Lord. Give them wisdom. Take away from them, Lord, anything that is not of you. Lord, please protect us. Protect our nations, Lord, where we have liberty and freedom and justice. Protect, Lord, our laws that they may not be to bind us, to destroy our faith, Jesus, but to exercise our faith in you, Jesus, and in our, to help our fellow men and women. Oh, Jesus, I adore you. I love you. I thank you for this day, Lord. And I thank you for, for all the people, Lord, who are with us in this healing service today. And Lord, I pray for the many places in our world that are suffering because of the persecution of Christians. And you know, brothers and sisters, as we pray today, I was listening last night, you know, to an EWTN that were sharing with us of the horrors of the sufferings of our Christian brothers and sisters. And many of those places that were mentioned, I was there with Father Kevin in Africa, in Nigeria, in, in all these places in the Middle East, in all these countries, even within our own countries, there's a persecution going on of Christians, of Christian men and women, of Catholics, of, of all of us because of our faith. I pray today, Lord, that, that you would give the these countries lord raise up leaders who will not persecute the christians i pray for all the people from other faiths jesus that you that one day they will come to know you jesus because you alone are the savior there is no other savior and i beg you lord to bring about a great revival i pray for my christian brothers and sisters of all faiths Jesus, you buy, you unite us. I pray that as a Christian, that I will defend, Lord, and protect this faith in you, Jesus. And I ask Mary, our mother, we ask your intercession. I pray, Mary, that you will intercede for us, that you would protect, please, Mary, protect us against the enemy and against error of any kind. Please, Mary, you crush the head of the serpent. Please help us to live in and with Jesus. Help us, Mary, to be able to do what you did, to say, here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Help us, Mary, to magnify Jesus, to believe in him, to trust in him. And for all the seminarians and all those who are on vocations, who are seeking, whether it is marriage or whatever their vocation is in life today at this healing service, Jesus, give them generosity, guidance and direction. Help us. We beg you, Lord, to send us holy priests, holy bishops. We beg you, Jesus, to, to, to renew those who lead our seminarians and form them, just as you, Jesus, formed the first disciples. May the formation of these men in seminaries be of holiness of life. And last of all, Lord, I pray to all the saints. I ask you, our saints, our guardian angels, to bring us into Jesus' presence today and ask him to heal us and to strengthen us. I ask all of this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. And please know that I am really praying for you before the Blessed Sacrament. And I ask you to pray for me. And remember, miracles do happen. But what's the requirement? Have faith. Have faith in Jesus. Please remember what Jesus said. Fear is useless. Put your trust in me. God bless you and I'll keep you in my prayers. And may this weekend of divine mercy, may it be a, a, a grace in our lives. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, <clears throat> as Moses gazed upon the burning bush and you spoke your word to the people of Israel through him, 
we now gaze upon you, Lord Jesus, in this monstrance. And so, Lord Jesus, you speak to us today. You speak your healing word to every aspect of our lives. Ezekiel, the description of the altar in the temple, where the water, which is the spirit of Jesus, is flowing out north, south, east, and west, globally. So Lord, you're pouring out your spirit globally. Through this video today, you're not bound, Lord Jesus. Sister Breach said, We're not, you're not bound by distance. You're not bound by time. You're only bound by our lack of belief. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to give us faith in what we're looking at right now. Give us faith to believe that it is you, Jesus, not a representation, but truly body, blood, soul and divinity, our healer. So we ask you, Jesus, now to come, take away our unbelief. Lord, there is an individual today who is watching this, who will not drink again. The addiction is gone. A woman trying to conceive a child will have a child. A man in a wheelchair standing up. Someone who has a leg that will not function properly will get freedom. Many, many disconsolate people, hopeless people with various illnesses, coming to Jesus in lines, in different directions, coming to the monstrance, being healed by Jesus. Because Lord, your treasury overflows. Your treasury overflows, Lord, with good gifts. Press down and brimming over, Lord. Lord, take away our lack of faith today. In this short time we have together, take away our lack of faith, our unbelief, Lord, our skepticism. Lord, you're healing troubled minds today and you're healing depression. You're healing anxiety. You're healing the spirit of suicide. Those who are contemplating it, Lord, you're changing their minds and you're giving them hope. There are financial situations, Lord, that you are sorting out. Lord, you're giving a green light to somebody, somebody out there, Lord, who is wondering whether to go forward or not with a decision. And Lord, you're giving that person a green light and that person knows as they're listening to this, what it means. We thank you, Jesus, and we praise you. Because you're working more powerfully than we can possibly imagine. He the cancers, Lord, the cancerous cells. Let the light of your Holy Spirit illuminate the darkness of people's bodies where sickness resides. 
So we come against those in your name, Jesus, in faith. We speak your healing word, Lord Jesus. Issues of the brain, a child with a protective helmet on because they have disabilities. A disability. An individual injured in a car crash. Lord, give us a deeper faith in you. Take away our unbelief. Make us, turn us into a people of true worship. Mend the broken hearts, Lord. Those who are going through rejection, breakdown in relationships. Unforgiveness and bitterness. Mend the relationships, Jesus. Those in impossible situations, those who find themselves with no way out at this moment in time. Lord, you can open that door. We ask you, Jesus, to close every door that needs to be closed and to open up the doors that you want us to walk through in faith. To all those who are weeping right now, give consolation. Those who weep for their families, for all those who have made wrong decisions and are now reaping the consequences, give them the grace to go to confession, to receive the mercy of Jesus. Because, Lord, your mercy is endless when our hearts turn back to you. We pray, Jesus, for our bishops, our shepherds, with the fire of your Holy Spirit, like Moses, Elijah, the prophets, would come down upon them and anoint them in this difficult time. We pray for those who govern us, and we ask forgiveness for the many laws we've enshrined in our nation that are directly opposed to your will, opposed to your commandments, opposed to our own good, as you have laid it out for us. Lord, we ask your forgiveness. Lord, heal our nation. Heal our nation, Jesus. Drive out the darkness that is in enveloped our nation at this time. Deliver us, Lord, from every spirit of the new age, the false promises of the serpent, false healing, false ideology, elevation of ourselves, of Gnostic spirits that St. John Paul warned us continue to exist parallel with your teaching in the church. We pray for the purification and deliverance, Lord, from every deceitful spirit, every alluring spirit, the false promises. Lord, there is only one promise and that is eternal salvation in you. We ask you, Jesus, to heal us and free us. Open our eyes, Jesus, to see with spiritual eyesight. Open our ears to hear your word in the midst of a forest of voices and opinions in the world. We ask you, Jesus, today that we hear your word and hear it plainly, and that we have the grace to act accordingly. And so we conclude this time with you, Jesus, by lifting our voice of praise to you 
and claiming every good gift that you wish to bestow upon us at this time. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Walsh and Sister Breach McKenna for a very reflective, very spiritual, very holy, very blessed holy hour. And as we were praying, I felt great healing happening all over the world, people being healed. And just before we came on, on air this morning, that I had a phone call from a man who is an alcoholic and he was saying he'd like to give up drink and he said he started for Lent to try and stay off it and he said that's he said would you pray for that at the conference today and I hadn't shared that story with anybody I just had it in my private prayers and intercessions and when Father Brendan was saying there that there was a man who was coming off the drink and he wouldn't go back on it. And I certainly feel and hope that that's for you. Um, I don't know your name, but I hope it's for you. <laughs> 